I am Mr. Masina. We are here in the UK to galvanize support for the ANC. You know that we have a branch of the African National Congress here that is vibrant. Uh, so we are here to make sure that they can solicit all the votes <coughs> that are here in the diaspora so that those people are able to exercise their democratic right at home. Secondly, we are here to speak to the investors about some of the decisions the ANC have taken, in particular around the issues of mining and around the issues of land. You will know that we just came from a conference in Mangaung and the Youth League, through its former leaders, <coughs> would have visited the UK and made some statement uh, which uh, were attributed to be threat to investment. So we've come here to correct some of the perception because we believe that the policies as, de as, as decided by the ANC in Mangaung are such that we should be encouraging more of investment from the UK into South Africa, in particular around issues of uh, mining as well as in issues of agriculture and so on. Leading the Youth League is a huge responsibility in the ANC because um, in South Africa currently there is over six million new voters <coughs> who we must drive a campaign to ensure that firstly they are registered but secondly they vote for the African National Congress. So every day of my life I am I'm thinking about the best way in which we can attract those voters. We need to speak to their issues. We know that uh, in the main in South Africa, the problem is uh, is unemployment, is poverty, is inequality. But uh, on top of the agenda is issues of education and skills mm -hmm. development. So all our efforts are towards crafting a message that is going to resonate well with young people of South Africa. So it's a huge responsibility indeed to uh, to be entrusted by the African National Congress and I'm certain that we will deliver this decisive victory uh, in 2014 and we are working towards two-third majority in 2014. The National Task Team <coughs> was put together by the ANC National Executive Committee after it disbanded the National Executive Committee of the ANC Youth League. You will recall that um, the former president uh, Julius Malema was expelled and the executive was subsequently uh, disbanded. So <clears throat> they needed to put together an interim structure which I am leading, <clears throat> which structure was going to help rebuild the structures of the organization but also assist the ANC through the election campaign. So we are currently busy with that. We have gone uh, in all the provinces, in nine provinces of South Africa. We have evaluated the structures of the organization. Uh, we are much more satisfied with what we've put on the ground that we should be able to <clears throat> have a very strong elections team for the ANC leading towards 2014. Look, uh, what we have found, um, there is a lot of uh, gatekeeping. Um, uh, it means I can decide whether or not you can become a member on my own principle outside of the organizational processes. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a lot of factionalism. Um, uh, you know, it's either you're with me or you're not with me. And, 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 and we've seen a new culture where a membership was... Um, 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 admiring leadership on a detriment of the organization. So they could not differentiate between party policy and individuals who are driving those policies. Hence, there would have been a match that went to Lutuli House, something that was, was never seen before. Um, so there has been some level of chaos in, in, in the Youth League, and we are here to root out that uh, chaos, um, but also ensure that the real members of the organization remain so that we can remain entrusted with the responsibility of leading the Youth League. If I was to assess the political situation at the time that led to disbandment and expulsion, I will say that um, um, I am presiding over the Youth League that is militant, uh, that is vibrant, but what we have infused now in my collective is critical thinking and discipline. We think those two things were lacking. As a result, people um, <coughs> um, misunderstood uh, misguided militancy to mean something else uh, when actually they were causing damage to the integrity of the party. We have lots of platforms in the ANC where if we're unhappy we're able to raise issues. So I will use all the internal channels to raise issues that affect the youth. I will not going to sell out the position of the Youth League <clears throat> in any way. I will continue advocating for the strong positions that the Youth League has advocated for. Especially those that have seen the light after the national conference of the ANC because other, you know, the Youth League is a very interesting organization. Sometimes we make policy proposals to the ANC. ANC can accept or reject them. 
Um, the one case in point is the issue of nationalization. It was completely rejected in Mangao. It's not the policy of the ANC to nationalize the mine. That's why those who had led this campaign, when they failed inside the ANC, they went out to start their own party, thinking that they will excite the masses of our people. Uh, it's important to tell them that our people are not fools. They know what <coughs> policy solutions can work and what policy solutions cannot work. So they're comfortable with the People's Movement, the African National Congress. I am more convinced that we're on the right track. Um, we have said that the state must decisively intervene in the mining sector, ensure that we get <coughs> a lot of uh, rent tax, but also in question of the land, uh, there has been a, a, a shift in policy. Uh, from willing buyer, willing seller to just and equitable. It means that the state can identify particular land and, and expropriate it and, and, and compensate it uh, at an appropriate price uh, because there's going to be a valuer general who's going to be looking at what is the real price value for each land other than to sell on the basis of what you think you can, you can imagine. So for me, um, we, the ANC has provided <clears throat> a stable policy environment in South Africa for investors to come in and invest. Um, the reason why we continue undertaking uh, study tours like this is to understand what is happening elsewhere in the world. Um, I was also quite touched today to learn from students uh, that one in two black persons here in the UK is unemployed and I asked specifically the percentage. They told me that over 15% of the population here is black so it means uh, half of that is unemployed, so it's a very, very high number that one would not have um, expected. Uh, and, and the reason varies uh, uh, from racism to other problems that we are confronting as well as South Africa. So I'm hoping that my being here will help us understand socio-economic environment here, but also see what is that we can take that can work there at home. In particular, uh, for the youth in South Africa, we have just signed the Youth Employment Accord, where government, business and labor has agreed in terms of how they're going to create jobs for the 25% of whom 70% are young people unemployed in South Africa. And we believe that it can't be correct anymore that young people are part of the statistics. We would want them to be part of the mainstream economy. We would want them to actively participate in creating small businesses, but also in securing employment opportunities. And that can only happen if they have the right skills, which is now we've made that our priority that every young person must go to vocational training but also must acquire academic training. Hence we're fighting for free education up to tertiary level so that we can make sure that we deal with challenges that, that confront us. We have a number of campaigns to deal with the social ills in our communities because uh, indeed they are there. Um, uh, you've seen even the president of the country, President Jacob Zuma, uh, leading a massive campaign in El Dorado Park because we've realized that the issues of drugs, the issues of teenage pregnancy, they've got a, an impact in terms of schooling uh, for those youngsters. So I'm much more convinced that the programs that we're having on the ground and the messaging that we've developed against drugs, against substance abuse, against teenage pregnancy and all sorts of um, social ills, we're, we're, we're certain that working together with our communities in South Africa and as well as the membership of the ANC Youth League, we should be able to dramatically reduce uh, 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 these experiences. And, and we believe, uh, quite frankly, that uh, um, only the campaigns that we've been able to put together, working with our government, should be able to resolve many of the challenges that we're facing. The message to young South Africans out there is that in the ANC we hope, in the ANC we will achieve, in the ANC we're looking forward to unite South Africa. That's all what we want to say to young people. So we want to call upon all of them to vote and support the African National Congress because it is the only part with tried and tested policies almost over two decades now that have extricated our people from uh, poverty and, 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 and underdevelopment. But we still know that more must be done by the government led by the ANC towards ensuring that we go towards uh, a social economic transformation as we have been advocating through our conferences. It's a dead snake, even before it starts.
So we have nothing, we, we are not even interested in commenting about it. Uh, our view is that <clears throat> you don't start a party out of anger. You, you start a party out of principles and shared values. Uh, 